because Zimbabwe broke it 984 and then I did it like a month later. Wow. 977. Wow. Yeah, so Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Was I in both of those races? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by then you were. I was. was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rolling like, on me, dog. <laughs> come to think of it. I yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What does it mean? Yeah. Yeah. In Budapest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The continental tour. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Sambin, that means you got to come do the show. You got to come, dog. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. It wasn't That's a good year for me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good year. <laughs> I need a free trip to Africa or something, man. <laughs> listen, but listen though, every everybody who I talk to outside of the podcast from like different regions, they 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 are very fearful of your 2015 year. Like yeah, 2015. Like you could say you year, had man. a bad year, yeah. but you struck fear in hearts in 2015, bro. That's the year that you ran 972, right? Nine, yeah. Yeah. Five nine sevens that year. Yeah, not, yeah, What? five. Yes, yeah. nine. He, he, his average was nine seven. Coach, coach told me, he said, we went into a race. He said, look, you don't gotta run nine seven today. Like, just slow down. Like, don't. It's like, because you know, it's a rhythm. Like, once you find that rhythm, it's, it's like, it's, it's like you just easier. Like, you understand the cadence of it. You understand how to get out the drive phase, the angles. You understand when to move down the track. You know what I mean? So, like, I just. What happened in that fall training was the fact of I left 2014 undefeated, right? I had a whole wow. season undefeated. But I realized that I didn't get a chance to race Bolt that year. So I felt like to me, it wasn't a, a, a whole victory yet. You yeah. Know? So I trained like a madman in like fall of training of 2015. Like whatever like our standard of training was, like if we had to pull sleds with 45 pounds on it, I put 245 pl pl plates on. Like I would push That's myself past the limit. Like I had to realize that pain is inevitable. It's going to happen. Yeah. But I want to control what the outcome is going to be. So I trained hard like a madman. Anything, anything that I did, squats, bench, I had to max. Like we max it. Let's go. So, and it, it paid off. Because by the time we started like really running, he saw it because my first open race was World Relays. <laughs> right here. In the we, were in, we were in seventh because we dropped the baton in the four by two. I ran our whole team back to third. The third. What? Like I was, was out. When you watch it on TV, we weren't even in the screen. He I just was out of the I camera. ran into the screen. He was I pulled out of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Listen, he was out of the screen. I, he, man, I called him. I was like, hey, yo, bro, whatever you and D doing, boy, it's, it's going to be a, a fantastic year for you. Though I was like two or three weeks later. Two three weeks later. <laughs> nine, seven, four. Out the gate. Out the gate. <laughs> nine, seven, four, out the gate. But the thing was, it's like, <laughs> My coach said something to me, he said, look, if you're writing your story and your legacy, he says, I can't help you write your story and legacy unless we, you help me turn the page, right? Yeah. So for me to turn the page, I had to go out and break workouts by meaning like he wanted it to be ran at a certain pace. I was trying to destroy the workout. I was running at a faster pace and I was still completing the workouts because I wanted to be better. I wanted to be stronger. I wanted to be faster. You know what I mean? Uh, and the only way I was going to be able to compete with guys like Usain in, in their prime was to like, Just dive into the pain and figure out from there. And so by the time we got into Doha, I was in 9-7 shape. I'm standing at the starting line. If you watch the video of the starting line, and my mouth is moving. I'm just kept saying 9-7, 9-7, 9-7, 9-7. And gun went off, boom, 9-7. And yeah. I was like, oh, this how we do it? So the next race, Rome, boom, 9-7. <laughs> What? Yeah. Then I went to Lausanne, <laughs> boom, 9-7. <laughs> I just found that rhythm and all that training. It really helped out. I talked to about three elite runners. I won't say their names. I ain't gonna put y'all out there. <laughs> and they used to be like, man, we used to see him when he came into the dining hall, into a diamond, he used to be like, shit! <laughs> <laughs> He's here again. Hey, we racing for second. He just, we just racing for second. We just racing for <laughs> second. <laughs> I was telling him yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday, I was telling him that world championships was his. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was his. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I told you, I said, what I tell you, I said, as an elite runner now, you have to know how to seize the moments. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, what, at the end of the day, history is going to, going to be there and it's going to show that I ran nine sevens, five nine sevens, the most nine sevens in the season, right? Yeah. But what do I have to take away from it? I had no hardware, the hardware that I wanted, that I knew I should have won, you yeah. know? And the crazy thing is, everyone knew it was mine to lose because when Balt came across that line, He hit the pose, oh, yeah, he and he looked. Hey, he did this to me. Bro, what you? The look on his face was like, bro, what you doing? Like that was yours to win. 
<laughs> you should have won that. <laughs> <sighs> Victory lap. I'm out of here. <laughs> but you did it in 2017, so. I did. Yeah. I did. Made a great story, right? Yeah. Made a great story. Th- this is what I told him, man. I said, he was invincible in 2015. We talked about it. I don't even know if you still watch that race. I don't even know if he watched that race to this point. Right? The final. Yeah. yeah, he, yeah. He, he, he didn't want to watch. I watched it's it. Painful. Like, it's I painful watched, you watch your tweets. Uh, he yeah. became a meme. I don't know if you watched the interview, but like, man, he was cr- Oh, no, crying. I didn't watch. No, like, I it, became, it became a meme. Like, it's, <laughs> <laughs> like, people were playing with it. But anyway, I told him, I said, in 2015, man, you were so invincible, man. Yes, it should have been your race. But, you know, sometimes, you know, it would have been all you. You would have thought it was you. Yeah. In 20. Uh, 17, 17 when he won, yeah. it wasn't the Cinderella story. He was hurt most of that year. He didn't tell anybody. Though. Yeah, I probably was the only one that knew. Like mm-hmm. he rolled your ankle and stuff like that, but like nobody knew. And the way he planned for him to win, it, it he won, but he expected to win the other way. Yeah, and sometimes God planned it like that. Like, yeah, you didn't have all the tools, but yeah, I'm like, gonna make you the everything winner this way. Everything happens for a reason, man. Exactly. Yeah, everything. And that's what I was telling reason. him: is they like, maybe that time for you to win wasn't now. It was yeah, this time. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, he he didn't understand it in fifteen and seventeen. He was like, oh, that's what you was trying to say. I got it. I got the gold. Now. Exactly. Okay. I called you. It's okay. <laughs> Literally, when I called you after the championship, right in twenty seventeen, you picked up the phone. I was like, ah, I get it now. <laughs> I, I get it. <laughs> I understand. You know what I should have did? I should have said it in. The African exit. I said, maybe when you get it your way. Yeah. You know, I mean, he it got it make more sense. He <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I like about him is the mental strength, man. Like, oh, it's next level. I appreciate yeah. that, man. Yeah. And, and that's what I, I think in 15, I thought physical could get it done. Only physical. Yeah. I was in 97 shape. Yeah. I ran 977 in the semis, slowing down, right? <laughs> and I didn't, that time in the semis would have won the finals. Yeah. Hands down but my mental wasn't there. I didn't get to the line with the mental part. You know what I mean? Because I was beating everybody so far that whole season. And then when I got up to that point where I started to race Bolt, yeah. every, that point where I do my omen yala, I drop him off in the, in the <laughs> middle of the race, he still was there. And I didn't know how to combat that. So for me, the mental part wasn't there to be prepared. I thought physical could handle it. Yeah. And then what happened was I wasn't physically fully prepared in 17, but I was mentally prepared the whole time. I was ready for that. Sometimes I always think like when when you guys like when you win like that so many times and you're out there, you create this. You you can't mimic how to battle somebody late in the race. Yeah. So now Bolt is at his stature, and you have somebody stride for stride been all season. That wasn't there at sixty meters, forty meters, thirty meters. Justin would turn around to the to the field and was like, "Hold this, I'll be right back." And then he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so he, he's really just gone out there alone. So for the first time in his career, I mean, not his career, that year, that, yeah. somebody was stride for stride. And I think it was, like, more strategic from both to really never give him a measure of himself that whole season. Oh, absolutely. Because he never raced Justin in that season until, <laughs> until the World, world Championships finals. or Olympics. So I think it's more strategic. Like, I'm not going to give him you a You know when I figured that out, though? I figured that yeah. out. I went, I went to bed. Maybe it was, like, two nights later in 15. And I was laying in bed in the hotel at the World Championships. I woke up, I was like, damn, he got me. <laughs> <laughs> I never got a gauge on him the whole season until then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was, it was warfare. It was mental warfare. You know what I mean? Like, if you feel like you're not physically superior, you're going to figure out a way mentally how to get the job done. Exactly. It's natural. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah.